Hey folks, and here's a wonderful little story about Star Wars lore, which is usually an issue with most fans of Star Wars. Those who are into Star Wars, the EU, the Legends, uh, all of that has been done away with or no longer canonized. So when a writer from Star Wars of whatever denomination, and I don't know them all, so I apologize if I'm stepping on anyone's toes who likes Matt Martin. I have no idea who he is. Uh, anyone who says that this is not canon, this is canon, it's like, wait, where do you get that authority? It, like a writer should not have that authority. It should be the owner of the intellectual property saying this is real, this is not. And it was a shame that Disney just threw it all away. Uh, that would, I think that was like shooting yourself in the foot. That's kind of silly. You should be able to fall back on all the wonderful lore that has come before to make a franchise even more elevated by drawing on some of that lore or by inventing something from that lore. That would be great. But in this case, uh, Star Wars story group writer Matt Martin says, Star Wars canon is all fake anyway. Now, just by reading that sentence, you're thinking, okay, does that mean it's all fiction? Chill out. Or is it meaning like it's been non-canonized, therefore it's not real anyway? I'm not sure. He might be referring to something else. So <laughs> let's just go through this. Group member Matt Martin recently declared that fans can pick and choose what is canon in Star Wars because it's all fake anyway, which is kind of like, oh, that's kind of sad. It's like, yeah, read what you want, but it doesn't matter. It's not real. Okay. His most recent comments come after a fan asked him to clarify his previous comments regarding Star Wars canon. And back in April, he responded to a fan who asked him about treating the old GT version of Clone Wars as canon. And he wrote, I'm of the mind that you can consider anything you want canon if it makes you happy. So he's not talking about specifically what was in the, the EU. He's saying what makes you happy. If you read a novel and it made you happy, that's canon, even though it's technically not. If you had a, your own made-up canon in your head, or your own story in your head of Mara Jade going on an adventure, uh, that's canon, apparently. It's a strange thing to say from a writer. For the most part, it still works, but there are some contradictions with other storytelling if you really care. Well, no kidding. That's the point. That's the reason why you have canon, so there aren't contradictions. You're not reinventing a force power or reinventing how lightsabers work or whatever. You want a consistent style of world that falls back on itself so you know why spaceships work the way they do, weapons work the way they do, technology, magic, etc., so early in the year, April, sorry, early in April, Martin shared an article from io9. Oh no, I know this article that they're talking about, which declared that our fascination with canon is killing the way we value stories. And if you know that image, that was exact when I was critiquing about. And he has to say, yes, everyone should read this. It's a much more articulate way of discussing something. I often tried to crunch down into 280 characters. It's also why I chose not to answer or give frustratingly vague answers to many questions thrown up my way here on Twitter. Now, this is this is sad, okay? You want your writers to work under a deadline, under pressure, under a box, under a category, under a genre, under uh, a certain number of pages, et cetera, et cetera. You want to make the sandbox as tight uh, as possible, but still allow the writer to fit into it and you want him to make a really beautiful sandcastle. You don't want to make him a very big sandcastle. That would take too long and be too engrossing and have lots of details for, let's say, a novella or whatever they're, they're working on. You want a very tight, specific kind of sandcastle. So everything, those boundaries of that sandbox have to be as small as possible. You get tighter writing, you get better writing, you get clearer writing because that forces the writer not to waste his time and space, if we're using the, uh, the sandcastle analogy. So he says, yeah, yeah, no, it's, this is, just go away, throw cannon away, reboot everything, just do your own thing, which is not what you want. This craving for cannon, this is in the article by, from James Whit Whitbrook, above all else is a toxic attitude, which is ridiculous. It's not a, and, and if it's toxic, then it's a good form of toxicity because you want the next iteration of the thing you love, the next Star Trek episode, the next Star Wars episode, the next 
uh, BSG episode, whatever science fiction you love, you want more of the same. You know, it's amazing that people read a series, let alone multiple of the same series from the same author. Uh, what a what a great opportunity for a new author to come in and do their own take on what someone already loves, and they're going to respect what came before, so that the next reader or consumer of that media is like, oh. Star Wars. I love Star Wars. I can't wait to learn more about the Sith and the Jedi and the code and technology and aliens and all that stuff. That's a good thing. They don't want to suddenly jump into um, a romance or suddenly jump into uh, diplomatic trade agreement conversations unless it's part of an, uh, an ongoing story with the things they were expecting. You see, there's nothing wrong with combining genres or combining plots that usually shouldn't be there, like romance, an adventure story, or uh, drama or murder mystery in uh, a space opera. But you can do that in a certain way. You can mesh these ideas together. And that's what we expect with lore. We expect characters and locations and time places and all sorts of things to be present. The hunger for facts above all else leads to things like filler episode becoming a derogatory term, which they are, because why would you want to waste everyone's time with fluff? That is the antithesis of good writing. You do not want fluffy chapters. You do want do not want fluffy dialogue. You do not want fluffy books. You do not want fluffy arcs. You want very laser-focused stories and plots and characters doing exactly what they want and not wasting the reader's time. He goes on, for stories that don't advance the larger ongoing plot or of a narrative or don't include some shocking new revelation that someone can add to a list. It's, it's, fillers are always bad. People argue about filler episodes in, in anime. Uh, I think in manga as well, but mostly anime where it's like, oh, here's a whole arc, a whole half season of some popular show because for whatever reason they wanted to do side stories or they wanted to do a side story arc because of budgeting problems or not getting the translation done on time or or whatever the issue might be. So it's always a bad thing. You can't do the big punchy stories in fillers because you have to go back to the original lore, the original canon. You can't kill off characters. You can't introduce new characters. Or if you introduce new characters, they exist within the bubble of the fluff. You know, this fluffy character that exists and then goes away because they don't matter anymore. They're not relevant to the ongoing plot or ongoing characters or ongoing conflicts. That's why you go into filler and go, uh, it's the thing I love, but it's going to be lame. You don't want a lame experience. You want to elevate the lore as much as possible. Like you're eating food. You don't go to a restaurant to have a boring hamburger. You want to elevate meats. You want to elevate the patty and the bun and the pickle, and all the toppings. You want to make them special, not deflate them. In discussing the article, Martin declared, canon should be added should be an added bonus, but not the be-all, end-all of a story. Sure, I agree. You know, it's you can only take the setting so far. You can only take characters from a previous story so far. That's great. I agree. But you still have to have that in there. You have to be within the Star Wars universe. You have to be with these characters or derivatives thereof. You can't just start from whole cloth again. The EU is no less good now than it was before due to the fact that it's no longer canon. I'm sorry, but this person's not a writer. He has no idea what he's talking about. Canon is not some negative crutch. It's a necessity. If you want to tell a story in the Shinar world by Terry Brooks, he, he so chooses to give another author the right to write a Shinar book, you better be damn well fluent in all of his books. You better know what the hell he's talking about. You can't just write fantasy and start inventing races and species and dragons and all sorts of crazy stuff. You can't just do that. There are reasons why people read one author or two authors in a genre, which is gigantic. And to just say, well, I'm going to do my own technology now. I'm going to do my own mad, my force powers now. I'm going to, it's like, okay, but you have to know how you get there. You can't just break all the rules without understanding them first. 
So that's what Matt is talking here in response to someone asking him. I personally don't see the, the point of recanonizing things. Well, neither do I, but that only happens when Disney has uncanonized something and it's a waste of time and money and now they're bringing it back. I, I wish they'd bring it all back. Why, why would you waste everyone's time? Why would you destroy... It's like watching uh, Star Trek Voyager and liking the show for whatever reason and then Paramount just goes, no, it's, that never happened. It's like, oh, really? <laughs> that would suck. As much as you like or dislike Voyager, just destroying its existence from canon, it's like, why? Why would you piss people off that way? If that version doesn't contradict anything, pretty sure it's clear, then anyone who likes it can consider it a part of their Star Wars story. This is, this is, this is like saying headcanon's okay. Believe whatever you want to believe. It doesn't matter. I'm sorry, that's not how stories work. Either there is Sherlock Holmes in the original canon or there isn't. The beautiful thing about old stories like Sherlock Holmes is that you, if you want, can take it. There's no, I don't think there's any legal or financial obligation to the original uh, owner of the IP. It's been uh, over 100 years. You're allowed to do your own. Authors all over the world have been doing that for the past 30, 40 years, I believe. So... You can take that, but you should never touch. You should never be able to say, oh, you know, that previous stuff never happened. And you shouldn't worry about that because you're doing your own thing anyway. But no one should touch the original canon of Sherlock. It was written at a specific time and place by a specific author for a specific reason. And the problems and, and, and gifts that uh, Arthur Conan Doyle gave us are his and his alone and should never be slashed. They should never be forgotten. But it leaves open the opportunity to retell it in the future. If you want to tell an Elseworlds, they do that with DC Comics or a What If and Marvel. Or if you want to do fan fiction and you're given authority by the IP holder to make that real, great, fun. That's fantastic. But there's no need to destroy something to make something new. You can work within the same sandbox that every other author from Star Wars lore has been given and try not to ruin it. You know, they, they give you the keys to the Ferrari. You better leave it with a full tank of gas when you're done. And don't make sure you don't break, break into anything or, or smash into any other cars or scuff the paint job. You know, th these horrible ideas like, ah, just, just run roughshod over everything just because you're, you need creative control. No, that's not how creativity works within a, a period or within an entire body of work. Fans generally put too much emphasis on what the company deems official. Yes, because the company decanonized everything. Again, it's like saying Star Trek The Next Generation never happened in the Star Trek universe. If you like the animated version, I do, then there's no reason to value it less just because it's non-canon, you know? Well, then why did they make it non-canon? Why do you think people are angry? The things they like aren't aren't real. Now, if there's a distinction between the universe of movies of Star Wars and the universe of books in Star Wars, great. But Disney didn't say that. Like, you know how there's J.J. Abrams' Trek, which is its own thing? Disney didn't say that. Disney said, no, this didn't happen. None of this is real. They could have called it a, a different universe. They could have called it a different timeline. They could have done all sorts of fancy stuff. Um, but they didn't. Martin would then be questioned about these comments when, with one fan asking for some clarity. I think the point that I was making was that what is and isn't canon informs, informs how future stories may be told, but it doesn't need to dictate how individual fans enjoy their own personal Star Wars story. That's not what you said, buddy. You said if it's, it makes you happy, it's canon, when that's not how canon works. If I own an IP and I have 10 books, and I want to decanonize the, the first nine, I have that right. And I just pissed off all the fans of those nine books. That's what canon is. It's basically Arthur Conan Doyle saying, hey, you know the study in Scarlet? Yeah, never happened. Sherlock Holmes never had that adventure. And you're like, oh, really? 
Why? Because I'm going to write another uh, story about Sherlock's son and that contradicts that, so I can't have it or whatever. It's like, what? <laughs> what was stopping you from writing a story about Sherlock's son with by, by keeping study of Scarlet? Arthur Conan Doyle? Why? Why? <laughs> so th- why uh, Disney did it, I don't know. Maybe they had some good reasons, but I, it just sounds like a silly waste of destroying what came before. And it's not to say that the EU was completely perfect. There were all kinds of contrary stories by different authors just because of the nature of that. And that could have been a big ball of yarn they didn't want to untangle. But why why bother untangling it? Why not just do your own thing and not piss people off? Like, why, why do damage in the first place? But Martin thinks, oh, if you're happy, it's real. It's like, no, dude, that's not how it works. So in the example earlier, the person was asking about recanonizing a past story since that specific story has been explored in the new canon. And I said, if they like that story, there's no reason they can't accept it as real in their version of Star Wars. See, this this guy does not understand what canon means. I don't care what a fanboy says is in his head. Of course, I have my own preferences of what was the real plot line uh, and the choices that my shepherd did in Mass Effects, in the Mass Effect trilogy, for example. Who did he hook up with? How did he end the story? Did he have a party on the Citadel or not? You know, yeah, in my in my head, because of the nature of the video game and the choices you can make. But to say an entire book doesn't exist, but does exist because it makes you happy is stupid. That's why when you read the the Star Trek novellas, they're pretty lame. They're not horrible. They're not horrible writing, but you can't do much in them because all the characters, all the main characters from the show can't die or can't have kids, or can't go off on an adventure and be drastically changed. And this is while the show is being in production. So people are buying the books, watching the show, and uh, you can't do too much. There's really cool stories where you can flesh out the world, like Peter David's Mzadi, where he talks about Beta Z culture, and that sort of made it into the the show, but very, very lightly. There's um, one called The Devil's Heart, where we learn about, I think it was Guinan's sister, who had a partial love affair with uh, Picard. So that was like, there's you can do cool things and you get really close, but not too close. That's the problem. And if it's done in a respectable way, of course it's good. But you can't do all the things you want to do to your characters. That's the problem with uh, taking characters from a main source, a primary source, and writing them in a secondary source. So I think what this person's trying to to under, explain is headcanon's good, but it's bad for writers, or, or or actual canon's bad for writers. But if it makes you happy, go for it, which is like saying, well, I can interpret anything anyway. And if it makes me happy, then, then that's, that's real to me, which is stupid. That's just not how stories take place. But if there was an opportunity to tell that story now, that new creator would not be beholden to that old version of the story. Yeah, so he's saying, yeah, I want I want creativity and I want freedom to do what I want as a writer, which you can do while not destroying what came before. It's not hard. You just tell that story you want. And instead of Luke Skywalker, it's Jake Skywalker. You can tell that story. Kind of like what Ryan Johnson did, only he didn't give a shit. He didn't give he didn't give a crap about the canon of Luke Skywalker. He just made his own Luke Skywalker, which you shouldn't have done, or he shouldn't have done, for obvious reasons. So to summarize, there is a reason that we need to internally know what? There is a reason what, that we need to internally know. I don't know what the hell this guy just said. What is and isn't canon so we can keep our line of official storytelling as aligned as possible, but... That doesn't mean fans can't individually pick and choose what they want to accept as, as true. What a, a what a what a pile. He's dancing around. Well, you know, Disney does have authority, but you know, you can like what you like. And that's also canon. It's like, no, buddy, you can't have it both ways. Either canon is real or it isn't. Your head canon is not canon. Okay? It's called head canon for a reason. It's all fake anyway. See, this is this is the the stupid thing. He's trying to hide behind these words. Of does it make you happy? Well, that's good because it's all fake anyway. It doesn't matter. So you you believe in what you believe, which is nonsense. 
He's, he's trying to move the goalpost even further. It's like, dude, just what are you trying to say? Does, do the, does the owner own Canon or not? Yes, then they can d- dictate what's real and what's not. And you can like whatever. No one say you can't like what you like. You can, no one say you can't invent in your own world uh, Raylo fantasies or uh, hyperspace skipping is now a thing. And I guess that's how it works now. We always could hyperscape, hyperspace skip or, or whatever. It all makes sense in your head because you don't think about it. So uh, he's trying to have it both ways. It doesn't work. Do you choose to only accept the real official canon? Cool. If you like to mix and match between community continuities, cool. If you like to make your own stories, also cool. Uh, hey, hey, fan fiction writers, do what you want. Yeah, thanks, Matt. That's great. By the way, what does Disney find as canon? Can you please tell me? Oh, it doesn't matter. Eh, whatever. What what a load of crap. So there's a there's a writer who doesn't know writing or doesn't know the concept of writing or is trying to placate uh, fans who are actual hardcore fans. And when you have hardcore fans, they really want to know what's real and what's not real. So they can talk about how things work. They want to know the logic behind how a Y wing is assembled, for example, and what makes it fast and strong compared to an X wing. They want to know this detail or else they can't have conversations. So this is really a, a really bad writer trying to explain head cannon and an actual cannon and just making a giant mess of Star Wars and and his his quality as a as a thinker and as a writer, sadly. Yeah, we're gonna get more of these people, guys. So buckle up. Thanks for listening. Have yourself a great day, guys.